as I told you, um, I needed new wheels to put my old tires on Slowpoke here. And I ordered them online. I went to Orange Aftermarket and looked at the wheels and got the vision number. Now, in Orange Mar Aftermarket, I think they're $139 plus shipping each plus tax. And I got these at summit racing for 67 dollars a piece with free shipping and tax so um what a big difference there was by just searching that part number online and you know getting the exact same wheel but here's the problem these are the stock tires you can see there's only about an inch of clearance on there with the stock tires when you turn the wheel to full lock and my uh my other atv tires from gizmo are about an inch a little bit over an inch bigger in diameter an inch wider so there would have been a problem there where it would have been too close i felt and the offset on these wheels was not good either they were um narrower than gizmo the the wheelbase center to center was uh, about four inches narrower three and a half four inches so i wanted to get that out so it would fit my trailer e-tracks too so i went to orange aftermarket look for wheels so i knew i had something that was approved by kubota to use here and let's pull this one off you can see um that's got quite a deep offset in there and the one thing you need are studs. This thing only has two studs in it. You have to buy the other four studs too. So I ordered them from Messix. But here I'll show you. This is the uh, stock wheel. And there's the vision wheel that I bought. It's about an inch and a half difference in the offset. Inch and three quarters. So, you know, that should get the wheels exactly where they were in Gizmo. And that's what the trailer was set up for. And that really kept Gizmo from feeling tippy too. Where this thing feels tippy on the side hills. So these are the wheels. They came, um, they were shipped directly from Vision Wheel. And I was a little worried, you know, getting them so cheap that they might not be a first quality wheel or something like that. But it turned out they're exact same wheels. Um, brand new, first quality, uh, you know, current production date, stuff like that. Really well packed and shipped well. And there it is. There's the ones I chose. I went with these. I, I thought they'd look good on, on Slowpoke there, so... And one thing, when you buy wheels, they don't come with valves installed. But I've got a, you know, a big bag of these around because they're something that you, um, you know, you need on tr tractor tires all the time. You break them off and stuff. And you got this little valve tool. I think I bought that over 50 years ago when I was 16. I got my first car. I always got flat tires and always was changing the valve stems back then because they just weren't made out of good rubber. So it's just, you know, pops right in there. And they don't, no problem putting them in. And they did come with a little tool to pull the cap off. And you got the center caps and also a little sticker to put in there. Now I think you can get other stickers if you want, but I'm going to go with a stock one. All right, over to this old Harbor Freight tire machine. I I don't know how many tires I've changed on this thing now, but it's got to be hundreds. Really, it was worth the, I think I paid $29 or $19 for it maybe 30 years ago. So I had to put a dowel and spacer in there because the wheel was too small to fit that um, hold down in. So I had a piece of plastic. I figured that wouldn't mar these wheels. And this is the first time I've dealt with a, a good wheel that I didn't want to damage. So um, and I figured that would be a little bit extra safety uh so let's tighten this thing down get this in place and these wheels only have a very shallow dish on them where you can put the tire on first thing i'm going to do is paint the tire up good with a, a mixture of water and dawn dish soap um i think i used about five parts water one part dawn and then if you get lucky the first side will pop right on and these are extremely stiff tires, though. These are six six ply sidewalls on. They're like a truck tire. They're extra heavy duty for the RTVs. And then I got to get this on. And I had to use a big welding clamp to squish that tire down to keep it in that one little spot they've got to um, in the rim to receive it. And then this is where I'm hoping that I don't damage the aluminum rims in. Actually, this first tire, I didn't really do that great on. I took a couple. I'll show you the, you know, another one in a little while. But this one was a little tough getting it started. Um, 
trying not to damage the aluminum and luckily it just kind of scraped the outside corner a little bit on the wheel but it really did no damage to the wheel at all so i was happy that i was able to you know get it on and these tires like i said are extremely stiff they're um they're the same as like a 10 ply truck tire so that's as far as i could get it before that tool became useless um someday i'm going to have to do that mod for the i guess the, the ducktail thing they put on them or whatever they call it but for now i just uh, take a couple tire irons and i'm going to slip them all the way in there so i just hit the edge of the rim and i don't damage anything and pop goes right on there now you can see these tires are going to be really easy to inflate because uh, they're so tight on the wheel too so um they're on the eight and a half inch gizmo wheels so you know they're stretched out to eight and a half and these new wheels are only eight inches wide so that makes a difference and pretty much are sealed on there you can see no straps or you know anything else needed to, to pull them tight to to start the air going into them so here it is another tire popped on by uh harbor freight tire machine really a handy thing that's paid for itself 20 times over i really like to look at these tires too and let's put some air in there and you can see they're just gonna you know just blow right up and uh gotta wait you shouldn't be standing right over these things when you blow them up either and you want to wait till you hear that pop when the bead pops and then start you know checking your air to make sure you don't put too much in these ATV tires, I think I run these about 18 to 20 pounds. And they'll carry a full load uh, with no problem. They've got a very high load rating on them. So I'll just double check the air on them. Get that right where I want it. And then I'm going to put a little bit of soap around the valve and the outside. Just to double check there's not a leak. Because it's easy to fix now if there is. So, and these are directional tires, so you have to make sure that they go on the right direction. And I had to pull that center cap off the, the hubs before I could put them on too. But you, know, you have to really be careful that you get them rotating in the right direction. So let's see, this is the last one I'm down to now. And I'll show you, this one went a little bit smoother. Uh, all the wheels were, you know, perfect shape. And this is how they're supposed to go. They're supposed to, you know, pop right around and go in there and... Finally, after, you know, three tires, I got them right. Yeah, you can see just how tight they fit. And then I got my uh, mailman came and got my studs from Messix. I, I like ordering stuff from there. If I, you know, it's just little stuff I don't want to go out and look around for. They've got everything on there, you know, online on their catalogs and all the parts diagrams so you can get the right parts, too. So, you know, these are the studs and going to use some of the red permanent thread locker on them like they did at the factory for the other two. And I'm just going to put one big drop on there and then screw this stud in. I don't know why they, they put two studs and, and two of the threaded bolt type things in when they uh, come from the factory. It must be easier for them or something or maybe it's easier to tell if you got a problem. I just cranked that up. I grabbed onto it by the um, the ring around it between the threads. There's a little space here that's not threaded that's a little bigger. And I'll just tighten that in with the pliers there. And again, one more. And, you know, you have to, you have to do this to each of the hubs. So that's, you know, one thing you've got to do if you, you switch over to aluminum tires on these uh, aluminum wheels on these RTVs. Uh, aluminum wheels there's no no such thing as a stud type uh half inch 20 lug nut so i picked up some lug nuts on amazon these were a real deep lug nut and they're half 20s and they look like they'd fit not not the best lug nuts in the world i mean they're only like 17 dollars for the set of them and i've got four extras but they look like they're a little bit extra deep but the threads in them don't go all the way to the end so i think they'll be good so let's start mounting these tires. Um, they are pretty heavy when you you do uh, try to get them back on there. About the same weight as the other tires actually that came off in the end.
and just have to get the studs lined up and then start the, the lug nuts and you've got to really wiggle them a little bit because the um, those deep pockets in the wheels have to be centered perfectly on the whole on the on the actual stud sticking out there and you can see how nice and tight they fit down in there and I'm just gonna just tighten these down with a socket by hand a little bit just so I can drop it on the ground and then go back and torque them all later so that you know that's it it's really easy to switch over and um, I didn't want to use an impact wrench when putting these on I'll take them off with an impact wrench but I like to put them on by hand and there's the front two done now it's time to turn it around back it in and do the other two and you can see that those wheels did pull it out a couple inches actually it's identical to what gizmo was now so these wheels definitely were um, the perfect choice and let's swap the back ones out uh, these ATV tires were useless I couldn't get up the hill in their backyard I had to back up and try several times to get up the um, they just kind of load up. They're not really deep enough grooves, and they, they load up with mud. Where these old um, Carlisles that I put on Gizmo, they'll go through anything. They clean right out and uh, work good. So let's torque them now. Just go through and tighten them a little bit at a time, and I just go in a crisscross pattern like that. Try to get them get them evenly torqued down and you know pulled to the center because they rely on the lug nuts to center them and then just go till it clicks on them all now i'll drive it around the yard a couple of times and i'll retorque them again too with aluminum wheels you never know they they always you know can come loose so it pays to double check them in like a mile or so so there it is uh switch is done looks much better now it's much got the white right wheelbase for the trailer e-tracks now it matches uh, gizmo exactly and actually it looks much better with a little bit wider wheelbase and it should be less tippy on the hills because that's one thing i noticed about this the uh, sidekick was uh you know a lot more stable on side hills so let's take it for a ride and just um i'll show you how they go and i'll show you why we call it slow poke so I'm in first gear now. I'm going to run the, just run down the, the backyard. It's kind of muddy here. You can see it's, we've had about four inches of rain over the last couple of days. So it's been constant rain here and constant mud. So this hill does get to be quite a mess. Oop, here goes a little chipmunk or squirrel. And you go down the hill here and I got trees that are blown down again from the wind. You can see on the uh, right there's an ash that I'm trying to cut up now that's blown down. And there's where, where I went down there and I got stuck and I had to do multiple tries to get out of there with those other tires. I just couldn't get back up this hill again. So we're just going to turn around here and uh, see if we can make it in one try with these new tires. So let's go. And for some reason, this hill looks a lot steeper through the camera than it is. You can see all the other tries. And I've got this in first gear to the floor. And you can see about the maximum I can get on this hill is about five to six, maybe seven miles an hour in first gear. And um, Gizmo used to take it at 30 miles an hour. So you can see why I call this slow poke. That's, that's as fast as it'll go up the hill. And I just wouldn't want to be pulling the trailer with it or anything. So let's go over here and put it in high gear now. So we're switched over into high. We're going to do a speed run here. And um, you can see it's to the floor and 10, 11 miles an hour going up a little. It's a little bit of a slope here going up, not much. So, you know, that's about, that's as fast as it goes right to the floor. The, the grass is a little bit wet and soft, but still it shouldn't make that much difference with a diesel engine. So now that we're up here, we're just going to turn around and do the downhill run here. Got to floor it out, and there we go. That's it. Uh, this thing's supposed to do 25 miles an hour, but you're lucky if you get, you know, 13, 14 out of it in the grass. And on the road, you can get up to about 18, so downhill. But that's about it. So um, that's where I got the name Slowpoke from. But anyhow, 
there you can see it was a pretty easy job to switch these over and they really did make a big difference and as you saw i made it up that hill one try no problem so um you could tell tires do make a big difference in how these things uh handle and you know just keep moving this stuff i just thought i'd do an update and let you know that you know i did finally get them switched over and i found some wheels and uh looks like it's good to go now now to get some of the, the wiring finished up for the winch and stuff. That's next thing. Uh, but I got to get the garden going as soon as it stops raining. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.